All right, so Loading Wars is just around the corner. The RC game show that we made up of a warehouse debauchery and a whole bunch of fun with friends. And I want to get this hydraulic model up and on the go. So the next thing, if you guys have not been watching this build series, this is a Lesu all-metal hydraulic forklift. I just finished in the last episode putting in the motor, the servos, the hydraulic block, the tank right here in the back, all the beautiful brass highlights uh, and brass tubing. I installed the, the mast that we built earlier and uh, like I said, now it's time for the small tubing. Now thankfully, this isn't like the excavator tubing. The excavator tubing was very, very thick and like it was more of a plastic instead of a rubber. This type is just a little bit in between that that kind of texture so I find it's going to be a little bit easier to work with. I considered removing this whole inside block and just taking it out and and making the the tubes um, but when I look at it and because this this uh, supplied tubing is fairly pliable I figure I can do it right in its own spot right here. So the oil pipe length as you can see here it's not in color, of course I wouldn't expect it to be. 36 millimeters and also 77 millimeters. So here's the actual pieces here. I could just take them out, but I want to double measure because I know when the boom moves forward and backward, it needs a little bit more line here. And in the excavator build I did, uh, it was better just to kind of eyeball it to see how much you needed. And here are some retainers. These are small springs. Sorry about the jumpy camera there. These are pretty tiny though. This, these are going to slide onto the uh, piping uh, before you put it on the final mounting area. Okay, looking at the instructions, I want to get this right. It's going to be going from the top here down to the middle. So I'll cut it. This part is not moving on the boom or mast. So like that, get one of those retainers on, then a second retainer. Put that into place. Sorry guys, such small parts. <laughs> Difficult to see on camera sometimes when my hands get in the way there. I'm gonna push these retainers into place. I've never used retainers like this. Maybe I've gotta thread them on. And then a few minutes later, you can see underneath, if I can focus in here, that now I don't have to worry about any kind of kinks in the line because these uh, outer sheaths here will keep them from folding, right? So I don't have any issue. These ones here, not too worried about because they're not going to move at all. And then here, my friends, are the two electronic speed controls. Anybody who follows my show knows what those are, but there are two specifically here. One's for brushed, which is this one here that has the two wires sticking out. This is for the drive motor and transmission that's located in the front axle. And then there, of course, the brushless uh, set up here where we have three wires. This is a sensorless brushless ESC, which is electronic speed control. So this will control the pump, this will control the drive motor. This is what it'll look like set up. Now you'll see that both of these ESCs are connected to the same battery port, which is awesome because you don't need to run two different batteries. This one on this side, I hooked up to the outrunner motor. You'll see orange to red, yellow to yellow, and then blue to the black wire here. And then on this side, these two drive motors are just black and they're actually unmarked. Uh, so if that runs in reverse, not a big deal. I can easily just switch the plugs over and reverse them and then that'll reverse the direction of the motor. So beautiful, I'll mount these up and get them plugged into a receiver. But look at this. This one's even labeled hydraulic, so I know that this one here is going to be my mixing channel. I'll get to that more in a moment. Okay, so at this point, I just need to bind my receiver. This is a little six channel receiver, as you can see here. This is the radio I'm gonna use. It's gonna be super straightforward. It's also gonna have side controls here if I need them, or uh, buttons on the back in case I need those. I don't prefer the buttons, but you'll see how I set up the mix so we can do the, uh, um, the controls on demand with the pump for the hydraulic fluid. 
Now here you'll see I've set up my hydraulic on channel 5 as well as my steering on channel 1 and my drive ESC on channel 2. Looks like a little bit of a rat's nest right now but that's okay we're going to be able to see clearly what's going on here. Keep in mind I still have two servos over here, these wires here, that control the valves so the lift and the mast moving forward and backward. I'll add those in a moment. I just want to make sure that I've got the direction of my servo uh, of my steering servo proper. I have the direction of the of the motor of the brushless proper and I have the drive motor proper. But before I start up the pump I want to make sure to have hydraulic fluid in there. So I'm going to open this up and add some hydraulic fluid right now. There we go. Once I've got one pipette in there, I'm going to make sure to have one on standby just so I can ensure that when that pump starts, there's going to be enough fluid for it to consume. Somebody had mentioned to me that I actually have to not forget to install the, uh, the hydraulic pressure relief valve. But this model actually doesn't come with one that you have to install. It's already preset at the factory uh, and you don't have to touch it at all. Okay, now I'll add that battery just to ensure we've got the motor directions proper. Nice, both are on. Let's see here if I want to turn. Oh, that's a nice strong servo, but I'm having a little bit a sticking issue there I see. Well, it just needs to be investigated into why. Not bad though, that works. And then the drive. It's so quiet. Micro ESC 320 amp NGSP 4232. What does the internet say? Okay, let me see. Working voltage up to 12 volts. So it should be able to take a three cell, even though sometimes three cells can be overcharged to almost 13 volts. Now I've already learned from other builds not to put the final resting plate on and put all this rat's mess away until you test the hydraulics. Uh, and that's what I'm gonna do right now, just to try to get these lines charged up. But first what I want to do is to make sure that I've mixed my channels properly. I don't even have them plugged in yet, so how could they be done properly? Well, number one, I have to identify which RAM is, or which valve is controlling which RAM. So I'm going to go ahead, plug these into channels three and, f uh, no, pardon me, into channels uh, four and six, and then I'll mix them in with channel five. Okay, mixing can be fairly intimidating for some folks, including me. It's, it's always a challenge trying to figure out your mixes. Um, but I'll try to make it super simple here. So down to mix. Oh, that's the auxiliary channel. Mix. So this is how I've done it in case you guys are following along. Uh, I've actually decided to make the pump uh, channel 6. It makes it so much easier. I've activated mix number 1 and I've set my master uh, to be the action that I'm asking uh, the forklift to do. Uh, for example, the lift. And so I want the, when I activate lift by pulling, uh, uh, actually that's not lift, it's actually boom. So when I push boom uh, forward, I want it to activate the, the pump at the same time, so that's channel six. There's no offset, which means an offset would be like one activates before the other one does. But you can see on the negative side, when I'm going negative, it's gonna be positive 100. <laughs> I know that's very confusing. But on the positive side, it's gonna be negative 100. And the reason why is because I'm getting the servo to open and close the valve on either side um, with, with the action I'm asking it to do. So I'm sure I've lost most of my viewers by now. Let me know if you're still watching or if there's only like two people that comment on this, I'm gonna have to skip this next time. Uh, mix number two, check it out. So then now I'm using my 
my elevator channel to raise the boom. So as the same time I'm activating the elevator, I'm also activating the pump. Same on the negative and positive. So this means I'm not running the pump all the time and we don't have to have a bypass channel. So, but to do this, you actually have to assign the pump uh, an actual channel. So what I did was I went to channel number six, I assigned it switch uh, SWB, which is a three position switch. I did that by going into the SW switches and choosing switch number three. Why do I do a three position switch on that? Because the simple up and down won't be good enough when you go to try to program it. Um, so there you go, you have to have that positive and negative side and then the neutral in the middle. So hopefully that helps you if you have any questions about mixing, uh, post them up in the comment section, but that should help you if you're building and this will help overall in your knowledge of mixing. Let me see here, if I move it, that's steering. No mixing yet, okay. Aha, I figured it out. Of course, one of the things that it doesn't say on the brushless one is what make it is, but it does have one of the set buttons on it. Now the set button itself, I put the blue dot there just to know the on position. Um, the set button itself helps you uh, set the neutral, forward, and reverse. You have to set that up before you get any action. Now I did have it run there for a moment off camera, so I'm gonna refill the tank. As long as I got my camera pointed the right way, you'll see it takes quite a bit of fluid. I emptied that right out. Okay, let's try it again. Oh, I think I'm actually going the wrong direction there. Okay, now forgive me, for you guys it's been seconds. For me, I've actually been working at this for about 30 minutes off camera, just charging the system because I know people building this and first charging the system, they're gonna think that it's not working or do they have the direction of the motor proper and I've been switching back and forth myself because the instructions give you no uh, uh, indication on how you should be setting this up. Come on. Back and forth action. It's very weird that it's set up that way. Is it fighting itself? I just gotta make sure. When it goes forward, it's got plenty of room on the uh, piping that we gave it. Ah, then I ran into issues. I know, it's like a nightmare with these hydraulics. You would think they would be easier. You would think the flow would actually work, but... Oh, there are some good things and some bad things about me being one of the first people to build RC products. Some of the bad things that I experience is looking like a fool when the instructions are done wrong or very difficult to read. The good thing is, is that I get to help out people that are actually watching along. And I actually have already had a whole night's sleep in between the last scene and this one. And what I figured out as I was thinking about it is that what I was having a problem with was these lines blowing off, which means I was having a return problem. So I looked at the lines in the book and I looked at the lines here, and it shows that off of this block, right here, there's two lines going to this center piece, but that doesn't make sense to me unless they're both returns. So looking at the top and the bottom, these ones were supposed to go to this side and somewhere under here. But actually, these two, this top one goes to the outside pin, the bottom one goes to the inside here, and then these two, they actually, get scooted over. So if you guys are actually building along, look at this right here, because this is how it should be done. I'm sure they'll change their instruction book after this today. Okay, so it's never as easy as you think it's going to be in the beginning, but I do have the hydraulics working now. Huh? What do you think? Oh, almost, there we go. And then forward and backward. So you wanted to make sure you had enough line here so that when it stretches out it's not pulling on anything. But at the same time you don't want too much there because it gets all bunched up. 
Now the problem I'm running into here is you can see a slack chain on both sides. And what I think I'm finding out is that the paint is actually affecting the roller. See it's not rolling? Now you'd think this doesn't have a, enough weight in the front, but when I go to pull it, there's quite a bit of resistance there, which means I'm gonna have to take these bolts out and look at the assembly here to make this roll a little smoother. I just want to mention, now that I'm done bleeding the air out of the tank, you'll see that I've actually changed this out to be a gasket fitted screw. So all the air has been bled out of the lines, and now I've sealed up the container. Now what I did was I just actually, instead of taking the paint off, I went inside and I shaved this roller down in size by about one millimeter on both sides. And now it goes up and down no problem. I've also situated the electronics on the plate. And you'll see there's some pre-cut areas in the plate. You can't see it under there, but there's a, a hole under there for all these cables to come up and cross over each other like this. That is where the receiver goes, and this is where the battery goes on this plate. You can mess around and do whatever you want. You'd be very excited at this point in the build knowing that you could lift things already. But one of the things you'll have to remember is if you're setting up dual ESCs into the receiver, you want to remove the red wire from one of the ESCs because you only want one of those ESCs to power the receiver. You don't want double power because that can cause problems for you. So I've gone over that in other videos, but simply put, remove the red wire from one ESC plug cut it, clip it, or whatever you need to do, then plug it in with just the white and the black cable, and then leave the other ESC with the red cable in there, and you have power. Okay, so I've been trying to get in the habit of showing more of my mistakes, even though I know some people are building along with me and you might have to go back, but I just said remove this wire to the ESC, the red wire, and normally if you're just plugging two ESCs into a receiver, that's the correct thing to do. Now, this, I noticed, because I don't have any instructions and I'm muddling my way through this, this, of course, has a, uh, a female coupler right here, which basically you're going to put this together. I noticed without this red wire, I did not get my drive motor to work because it goes into the sound card. This is the sound card, which we'll be putting some heat shrink on to protect it. Then you've got two uh, coming out. Power means actually throttle. This is the throttle plug. So you're going to want to plug that into channel two or whatever your throttle port is. The sound is going to be for the switch, the horn, or for you to activate the sound when you turn it on. So this is going to need an additional channel. The way I had set my receiver up was, was close, but since I had to switch things around, um, really what I've done is I've put the sound on channel four five. I've moved my mast, of course, to be on the elevator channel, which makes more sense, which for me is channel number three. And then I'm going to plug these two in and give you um, uh, an example sound. Now you'll see all the ports are full except for my battery slash uh, bind plug, which is the very top one. That's open, so it's a power plug. Okay, you can hear the sound card. Sound card has a small blinking light on it. It does have uh, an extra port open. I'm not sure what that's for. But then on the side, there's a speaker underneath. And then you can move forward. It does not turn on when you're using the hydraulics. So smooth now, everything's worked out. but it does work when you move backwards and forwards. And there is a horn, although I'm still trying to figure out how to do the horn without turning off the machine. That didn't take long. So what you gotta do is you gotta push up twice. And then if you just push up once and then down, it turns it off. So then if I push down again, it'll turn it on. If I push up twice, up, up, horn, and then up once, down, turns it off. Sweet. Somebody asked me to do a comparison between this and the Carson forklift. They are identical in size, I would say. 
They're very close. Can you imagine Lesu was able to squeeze all this hydraulics and electronics on the inside? Unbelievable. This is the sound card, but I just took some heat shrink and put it around there, heated it up, and of course protected all the electronics. This will be getting pushed up inside the cab. I recognize this light controller. This looks a lot like a capo light controller, but I don't have any uh, proper cables to help with the signals on the side. Um, so signal lights for us on Loading Wars really isn't that important anyway, so I'm just gonna go ahead and solder the um, positive to the positive and the negative to the negative for the lights, and then that way they all go on when the machine goes on. So basically, just like that. Well, that is a first. I cannot figure out why we're not getting power to this little thing. No LED power at all. Everything was soldered together properly. No lights. These two little toggle switches, they don't do anything. I've got power to the receiver. No lights. No LEDs. What's going on? Yeah, weird. I double checked all my connections, double checked here, tried both sides, both ports, tried a different port to see if I could power it up, but I must have a dead control board. Oh, bad luck. I'll have to let Les you know. They'll send me a new one, I'm sure. All right, well, that's too bad about the light controller, but no big deal. It's pretty minor in the grand scheme of the huge build for me. Sorry about bumping the camera. Let's see if this actually works here. So left and right. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so sound unit. So there it is. That's on. Forward and backward. And then mixing. So this should be back. So that's mixing the pump. And then if I just go back and go up a little bit. Pull back on the stick. Beautiful. Still a little shaky. I'm gonna work on that. Probably just air in the lines. Nice, a little smoother. Okay, so I think it's good enough to seal up for now. Let's close it up. Turn it off. Now the neat thing about this, it's different from the Carson because the Carson was a bunch of um, Phillips head screws that you had to remove, four of them. This actually has a clip system. So these two yellow perches up here are actually just kind of like a lip. It's genius how they make it a nice, quick, easy release and you can remove the whole top to access everything. So let me clean up the rat's nest, make it a little bit less messy, and uh, then I'll clip it on and show you. Well guys, it's been an awesome build. I hope you've enjoyed it. And of course, now we get to enjoy a little bit of action. Now you'll see when I've clipped this together, it's got a little bit of a gap here. This is where I see the only advantage over the plastic one is we were able to screw down in four separate areas. But I really like the easy access point of being able just to move it around. Holy cow! This thing has some weight to it, guys. Geez, I wish the lights were working right now, but I will work on that. That will be coming up. But let me fire up that sound kit. Let me see here. Now if I go one, up, down. Did I plug it in? There we go. <laughs> Hard to tell without the lights on. <laughs> so, raise up. Sweet. And down. And then mass forward and backward. Sweet deal. Forks are no higher than a centimeter off the ground at all times. What about the turning radius? I got it all set up on one. Can I back up? Listen to this. Let me turn this off for a second. Listen to how silent this is. Amazing. Tight turning radius too, guys. 
how's it gonna do with some weight on it? Shall we do the first lift? I think I got the perfect thing in the spirit of loading wars. <sighs> there you go. <laughs> I think although we should move it from one shelf and put it on top of the other. Oh, is this pallet gonna let me even do that? Here, precarious. You know why? What priority is our safety, guys? Post it up. Now the Carson forklift, there's no way would lift a can of anything. Fork should be this low. I know, Crazy Joe's watching right now saying, cheating! <laughs> now, can we do this? Up. Ooh, beautiful. No problem at all. Look how smooth that is. Now, if we're forklift failing, we should turn right now and see. Look at it turn. Limited slip differential, guys. This is how most of the forklift fail videos start. Oh, penalty, I just hit the rack. Now there we go. Speaking of penalty, guys, check out uh, this weekend's coming loading wars. Uh, we're going to be using this forklift as the penalty, of course. Getting the guys used to it. And, of course, oh, can I get this off the pallet? Come on. Come on. Oh, man. One of the funky pallets with some weight on it. There we go. Oh, yeah. We did it, guys. Thanks a lot for joining me in the build. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, I've definitely enjoyed sharing the build with you guys. Hopefully you're inspired to try out the RC hobby if you haven't done so already. Or maybe explore a different area of the hobby that you never thought could be fun before. You never know what's waiting for you in the RC hobby. And we'll see you in the next episode of RC Adventures, guys. Now get outside and have fun with RC. Or like me, stay inside and build one.